So the next thing I was going to show you was just how uh, the Moodle gets set up as in the sort of our ICH style. So when you log into Moodle, this is what you see. You kind of see your courses for the academic year down here. So let's have a look at Daksha's. Uh, where are you, Daksha? You're implementing, aren't you? 3407. We've so this is what it looks- any, We've not done anything yet. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm showing it because this is what it looks like when Joe and Elisa have set the course up. So there's just some standard information that's there to start with. Um, so this space is the introduction to the student. Then for each day, you kind of get given what they call a tile. So Mo there's quite a lot of jargon to deal with. And then in this tile, this is the space where you add your step-by-step -step list of uh, learning activities and resources. And then on the right here is what the Moodle calls blocks. And you're, that's that Panopto link. So when Yale pops the videos into Panopto and then adds them to a space in here, they also automatically appear in here in completed recordings. And that's been set up by Joe and the Moodle team. Then the, these are just some generic blocks, but we've been configuring these for the ICH courses. And so Astrid and Yale will configure these blocks and they'll also configure how this looks. So it's kind of our ICH style, it's what I've been calling it. And that starts to look like, and I'm gonna show you John's module now because that's finished and it's safe. We've got no students on it. So here we go. So this is, so we move from, oh, from this to this, this is what you'll kind of see. So these blocks are here. So we are following our students' uh, completion. So that's something that Yell and Astrid need to set up. We see who's online, that's there already. And then we have a nice Google thing. And this was the original setup that Kova and Marcia used and then we followed on since. And this is, um, the tiles format and each tile has a day. And then there are slightly different ways of organizing your steps. But the way we've done it in 3400 and 341 is we tend to set up a different um, resource or activity for each step. And I'll explain that, what I mean by that uh, in a minute. So the students really obvious for the student that they work through number by number with the live sessions highlighted to the end of the day. Right, so this bit is really for Yell and Astrid. Um, I'm looking at this as a student at the moment, so I'm going to return to my normal role, which is something you can do in here, switch role. So to configure the course, Astrid and Yell go to edit settings. And there's three key things. The first is that the format needs to be in tiles. that we show the progress as a percentage. And we emphasize headings. The next thing is that we force the theme to Lambda. So it's set on do not force to start with, but we set it to Lambda. Announcements we usually set to zero because the module organizers have been happy to communicate with the students using uh, email, but that's a conversation you can have with the uh, module organizer. Um, if you set it to one or two, I'll show you what that means for the Moodle in a minute. Tend to reduce the file, maximum file load size to about 20, just that's a hygiene thing. But this is really important. We enable completion tracking. So if you, you need to enable this for the completion tracking block to show. And finally, groups. So, so far we've been very cautious and risk averse and we haven't used groups. And I would highly recommend that Claire and GV, you maybe don't set up for groups because it's more, it's quite a lot more work for you during the module and we've got, you've got so much to do, but Daksha and Andrew might want to do it. They have a bit more time. And obviously you can override me completely. But if you set up groups, then Moodle automatically assigns your cohort student into uh, different little subsets. So you might have um, two or three students in group A, group B and group C. And then you can set up clones of your different activities and each group of students will only see 
the activity they are assigned to. And that way you can, it just enables um, asynchronous group work. That's all I'm going to say at the moment. But that all needs quite careful planning and then needs quite careful management during the course. And I, here I definitely defer to the tail team who've got lots and lots of experience, John and Christine and Marcos of experience of using groups like this. So uh, I would definitely get them involved. So that's that's the that's a quick run through the module setup. And I'm I really hope we can have all three modules set up before I leave on Wednesday uh, after Wednesday. So now the rest of my talk, which hopefully will be about 10 minutes and then we can chat. Sorry, is about can I ask a quick question? Of course, of course, anytime. Um, the it was just that's fantastic, thank you. But the, the maximum file size you said 20 megabytes. Well it, so is is that for the the video recorded lectures? Great question. So no, because the videos are hosted on Panopto, they're a, they're completely exempt from this issue. Fine. Okay. This is about the up, uh, Word documents or images that you ask the students to upload fine. to Moodle. Fine, 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 fine. Yeah. So yeah, one of the activities we've been using is um, through the quiz activities, asking them to fill in a Word doc, uh, Word template, and then yeah. upload their completed Word template. Yeah. And you want that to be less than twenty. Brilliant. Thanks, Ellie. Yeah, I mean, I'm being a bit, a bit of a Nazi. It's not the most important. So, right, I'm going to go back to my mood. So this, I want to show you this. So this is how we've been using Moodle. Actually, let me show you this first. Let's go back. Let's go to Will and GV's module because this is one I've been, we just started working on. And you'll see how it's all faded out and got these hidden things on. So at the moment, the students can see Daksha's module. That's what it looks like to them. But when we start working on it, I highly recommend that you hide the activities and stuff like that. And Astrid and Yale know how to do that. So when you as a module organizer arrive, it will look more like this and look all hidden. And then when we're all happy and we've quality assured everything, Astrid and Yale can unhide everything and open the course. Right, I'm getting a bit lost. It's so complicated. So, so what you do, you're the module organizer. So hopefully it's mostly set up. The steps are there and you're adding content. The first thing you do is to turn editing on. Using that button. And go into a day. So you can see there's all these different sort of editing icons have appeared. So what if you want to add if you want to add text to a particular step, you click the edit there and you go to edit settings. But what I want to talk about first, I'm sorry, I guess I'm jumping back to Astrid and Yale here a bit, is about adding activities or resources. So this is what I'm going to go back to my slide talk. So there's this huge array. Moodle is very powerful. So a huge array of things you can do, but we've only been using a small subset and that's for two reasons. One is it fits our uh, design style, which is all about something that's uh, very um, robust, uh, risk averse, and will transfer easily to future learn if we choose to do that in the future. Yeah, so those are the two things. It's, it's robust, risk averse, and it will transfer easily to future learn. So I'm gonna show you the ones we've been using. So uh, yeah, this is quite a lot to take on board, but hopefully it will it will get a lot easier. So most of this will be set up for you when you go in, but this is just so that you're aware as module organizers. These ones I've circled are the ones we've been using. So Moodle thinks of resources as sort of static content, and it thinks of things that where the student inputs into Moodle as activities. So for example, a forum where a student enters their thoughts into a into a post is an activity. Whereas a page could hold a video or it could hold some text that the student just reads. Yeah. And then I've also included, these are the two external applications that we, that Astrid and Yale will have embedded into Moodle for you, the videos and the Zoom calls. So I just, that's, let's get out of there again and then go back to Moodle and let's have a look. 
So yeah, so add an activity, these different, but we don't use them all and they'll hopefully be there for you and there's the resources. So let's go up to 1.1. So this is a page. Click edit. Um, try, actually, let's find one where the video has been put in for you. This one. Now, I'm aware that this video may not last, Will, but I've stuck it in for now. So you click edit settings and there's the title. So this has come from your spreadsheet. So Astrid and Yell have known what to call this step. The description you can ignore. It's um, metadata really. So it's just ignore that. What you would want to looking for is content. And when you get there, if your video, if you've sent your video off to Yale and she's managed to get it on Panopto and then embed it using that bit of code I saw, you'll see this. So you scroll down below that. And then you can add your text using this, they call it a WYSIWYG editor. So it's very light words. And what you can do is copy and paste from your Word document. What I highly encourage you to do in your Word document is set it up uh, using styles. Because what happens when you copy from your Word document is that Microsoft copies all the information about your styles, like headings and paragraphs and bullet points, and it pastes it into uh, this space here. So it can be quite tempting to be a bit careless with your styles. And when, if you're careless with your style, so for example, if you don't use normal style, for your paragraph text, it can look terrible when you paste it in. It can start to look weird. So Astrid and Yale know how to help you with that. So if you get into a terrible mess, they're good people to turn to. But, so you've pasted in your content. Now, what you'll also see at the bottom, and if this is not very robust, but if you can be very careful not to delete this information, which Yale will have put in as well. So she's taken your script that you sent her and she's turned it into a transcript. So it's just all your, everything you say in your video, she's turned it into a, a Word document or a PDF and attached it to the Moodle page. And she's also done that with your slides, if you've shared your slides. So I'm going to just talk through these things. These should be set up for you by Astrid and Yale, but just so you're aware. This we usually take off. There's no need for the student to see that in our case. This should be a make available, but not shown on the, co not shown on the course page. Ignore this. Now this, so because we turned on completion tracking, I'm going to, this is before the course, let me show you what it would look like before anyone saw it. It will start like this. So when Astrid and Yale see it, they go to show as activity as complete when the students view this activity. Now this helps that, I'm going to show you what that maps back to in a minute. You can ignore these two things. Then you can save and display. Oh, I'm running out of time. Uh, right, I'm going to show you quiz, uh, formative exercise, I think, next, because I think that's... Uh, yeah, I think that would be useful just to know how the quiz yeah. need to be written uh, so that they can yeah. be put and in. Yeah, and a forum as well. I think that's a yeah. forum and a quiz. So you remember that completion tracking? That then shows up in here, so that when all the students view it, you can go in as faculty and see what people have looked at. And that's what John was talking about in the meeting yesterday, that he was kind of keeping an eye on his students that way. Okay, all right, let's go down. Let's look at a forum. So the way we've been naming them is if we are asking students to input into Moodle, we've been calling them activities, or as if they're kind of more passive reading or watching, we've been calling them articles and videos. It's, so you'll see here, in this step, Will will go in and add his text and his prompting question for the forum. And then the students will reply and they can just, just show you what that looks like. That's what they see. And when they've replied, the forum will be complete. So again, in this one, it's very similar. Edit settings, add your text, copy and paste from Word should all be set up for you. 
ignore, you can ignore this. Um, maybe if you don't want them to attach anything or you want, you know, you can manage that if you need to, but generally ignore. I would ignore this. Ignore, 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 ignore. <laughs> Uh, Yale and Astrid will have set this, no groups. And again, this should have been set, uh, this will have been set by Astrid and Yale. And I just, what we tend to do is just make sure they're posting to the discussions. We require them to do that before it will show as complete. And that means it'll show as a green tick on that tiles page. Ignore these. Okay, right. And then formative exercise. So for this, I haven't set any up for Will, so we'll go back to uh, uh, this is um, John's. It's the first one's a good one, isn't it? So these are all videos and articles. So they're pages. This is a multiple choice quiz. These are really complicated and to set up. Well, so there's two things. The first thing is you edit the quiz. You add your questions in here. So we've been very risk averse with our questions. So actually, let me, when you get see adding, ah, uh, I can't I can't show you all the different options because this quiz is locked because it, the course has been running. We've only been adding really multiple choice questions mostly, either a single answer or multiple answer. Moodle has a lot of different other types of quiz uh, you can ask. But if I show you a. Uh, Your question goes in here. We don't tend to do general feedback. We tend to ignore that. You select one or multiple answers. Tend to not have numbering. And then here are all your choices. And the correct choices get a grade. This is a single answer quiz. So you set the grade at 100% if they select this one. And the way we've done, the quiz should always have feedback. So the way we've done feedback in this quiz, it's just it's very simple actually, very, it's to let them know when they're incorrect. We usually have more feedback than that, have picked a bad example. So no penalty for incorrect tries. This is a poor example to show you. Uh, if there was give a lot more feedback. Yeah, yeah. With and all, the question, with the, yeah. With the actual question we normally put yeah. up further up, don't we? Let's try this one. <laughs> Let's try a different quiz. But, you know what? I think that came from um from um, uh, Epi. Yeah. So when we were learning our trade, which one should I look at, Astrid? Um, I think I I put one of the trachoma quizzes in two, three, four. Into eight. your into your yeah. into your, yeah, it's find you then. It just doesn't. Oh. Show, you have to go down to more. For some reason, we don't show up. It's oh. Certainly, the ones we did on Prius, we we put in yeah. a lot more feedback. Yeah, yeah, and I would want to. I would encourage you to do that to. What are you called? Tr eliminating trachoma? It's not a nice picture. No, um, okay. yeah. it's childhood blindness and ocular infections. 3403. Oh, maybe you don't have. Maybe I don't have access. Yeah. Let's look at one from Priya's course, although it's running at the moment. So it will be a. So when you see that the course is running, everyone current turns up and you can see them. You pick a nice quiz. Uh, this one, uh, Daksha, would that be good? It's hard to remember. I, them, isn't it? I can't remember. Yeah. yeah. That's an activity. Did it have a quiz with it? One point this eight. Is quiz, that, Sally? I don't think this had a quiz with it. Let's have a look. 1.8 had a quiz. Is a quiz. I was looking at the wrong one. So I should say this, this bit here is in edit settings and Astrid and Yale 
can set this bit up for you. It's very similar to the edit settings you have on the article. So you pop a, to add an image, there's this button here. So yeah, I think we're running out of time. There's all sorts of things I'm not telling you, but let's, let's, yeah, that's, this is the, okay, let's have a look at one. So a question, one answer only. We're shuffling the choices. We've numbered the choices this time. Here we go. So this is an incorrect answer. So we've provided feedback on why it's wrong. Same again. This time we've provided feedback on why this is the correct answer. And again, why this is the incorrect answer. And so for this is additional that will show up. So you can see it's quite fiddly. Yeah, but, but I think um, certainly that this is something when we do the QA, we make sure it's all checked out and-, and we Yeah, absolutely. Put it I think if you, if you stick to multiple choice, either one or multiple answers, that Daksha and Astrid and Yale are totally capable of setting up a really good quiz for you. If you've written it like that in Word, in Word document and shared it with them. Another one that works quite well is putting the correct words in. If you have a select, that's quite straightforward too. Yeah, that works well. Too. That's yeah. And then, although we're very short on time, another activity we've used a lot, but this is also using the quiz uh, activity, but it's a formative exercise. What we've asked people to do is uh, Yeah, submit uh, essay type questions. Um, so in this one, we just asked them, let me, I can show you. So we're asking them to submit two research questions and then they compare their, re their answer to the actual research questions. So this is not a graded quiz. What happens is they submit, they compare what they've entered with a model answer. Uh, the module organizer can have a look at what they've submitted afterwards and then everyone can discuss it the next day in the synchronous session. So this is the question. So a lot of reading. Yeah. And at the top, read the following background information and enter your question into the text box at the bottom of the page. These have worked really well with the students. They've been very straightforward. So they enter their question here. What they think it should be using the Pico format. It for the next one, there's two of them. Sally, what do you call these in um, Moodle? Uh, they're quick, they're also quizzes in Moodle, but they use a oh. slightly different um, quiz edit quiz option, which I I must I will show you because otherwise it makes no sense. Well, just imagine if if I if we just send Astrid the, the word thingy me and yeah, what what we're asking, she'll be able to put it in the right place. Is that right? Yeah, I think with quizzes, def quizzes and videos, we can the team could definitely be do that help there. I think it's, if you can enter the content into the article and video text pages, that would be fantastically useful. So if I'd actually entered anything, it would be here, and then this is the model answer here. Yeah. There you go. That's how it works, and that also works if you ask them to upload. Uh, a Word document, we can do that as well using this. Let's see if I can find one for you. Um, yeah, uh, mo maybe that were good examples in three, four hundred, Sally. On yes. uploading the whole article in the formative exercises. Which is easier when it comes to giving feedback to the students for the Moodle organizer to assess, because that's obviously important too, isn't it? Yeah. So, so this is from 3400 and it's been, it was in week one. And you can, so what I did there, I did it very quickly, sorry, was I went to this and I said, show me the results. Can't see, where are you? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, and then you can review their attempts. And what we asked them here was to upload a Word document, to do a formative exercise and then upload the question, download, fill in, and then upload a Word document question sheet. So I say one of the reasons we've used this approach is that we're, we're not terribly sure about their internet connectivity. So we didn't keep it all online. There are different ways of doing this exercise, but this we thought was a quite nice safe way of doing it. So we've set up this document and then they have filled in this. These are their answers here. So okay. the bold was what was there before and then those are their answers. And the students have become quite used to this method because they use the same thing for their assessments. So, so this, they yeah. download the question, then they write it, and then they upload it, and then we yeah. see the uploaded version. Yeah. But right. they so also, if, if you're giving them a paper to read and you've got questions you want them to address in a paper they've read, this is a, a way of doing it. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. So we... Yeah, you, can, you just set it out really clearly what you're expecting them to do. Download and read this paper. Now download and re work through this sheet. Then press pr attempt quiz. And, and, and that, that seems to be, that's been working fine. We've not had any problems. So, okay. so when, I, when I go in and do a QA, those are the things I look at. Is the instruction clear? Is it going to be transparent for the student to to know what to do and is that thing is the system working so that's sort of what we we aim to do 